not listening to Next Legacy Radio. Now, like every Sunday night, we always make sure that we do something a little bit abnormal, something that most radio stations don't do, and that's make sure that we give you as much as you guys and girls need out there to be able to get yourselves wound down. It's an extended weekend because it is a holiday weekend, but at the same time, Sunday nights is always a good night to be able to chill, relax, and take it easy. And, and, and why not kick start it with, with, with a power group fresh from the 90s intro? And I'm going to put a mic on them in a second, but this is Branded After Dark, your man Branded in the building tonight. And like I've already said, we got the we, we got a guest extraordinaire. We got intro in the building. We're definitely going to be talking about just R&B in general. We're going to talk about new projects. I have a new, brand new song, fresh from the group, that we're going to debut tonight as well. So we're going to have a couple of segments with the guys, and we're going to have some fun tonight. And I'm just glad everybody's here. A lot of a lot of intro fans, which is definitely dope to see. A lot of people out here in uh, Japan, Germany, overseas is definitely a good look, as well as the states out here. So just to let people know that it is a worldwide online radio conglomerate and, uh, and, and, and they're big, massive intro fans. And without further ado, put the fellas in the building. We got Buddy, we got Jeff in the house tonight, two of the three members of Intro in the house on Branded After Dark. Fellas, it's good. Intro's in the house. I am Brandon. Brandon after dark. We here. What's happening, fellas? How, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Doing good. Happy, excited to be back on the scene, back in the studio. You know, back with the brothers. Just making great music. Um, appreciating this whole new uh, avenue that wasn't available to us in, when we first came out in 1993, 1994. No doubt. we are. In- and, and and since and since you kind of brought it up, let me just go ahead and kickstart it this way. First off, I appreciate you guys for calling in, and uh, you know coming on 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 the station and, and and promoting your brand. I definitely appreciate that. And you know, speaking of speaking of just you know different things as far as changing up uh, compared to when you guys first striked out in the '90s compared to now. Like you know, how has that transition been from prom- promoting the intro brand? To uh, you know, just, just just the songs in general. How, how's the transition? Yeah, um, I think that um, the transition was you know, as we sat back and saw the change in the industry, um, it was a it was a delightful thing to see you know a lot of young cats coming up and taking a piece of what the artists did in the nineties and adding on to what they're doing now. Uh, mm-hmm. We actually gained a lot of new fans as well. You know, or as Fifty Cent um, using our stuff and you know. We went on the road with him, and, you know, we got a piece of his fan base, which was actually a blessing. Right. You know, it was just, you know, a learning experience of seeing, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, you hear your parents talk about, oh, this music today ain't nothing like it was in the 60s. You know, now we're growing up and saying, oh, the music today (laughs) is nothing like it was in the 90s, but now they're going to grow up, they're going to grow up and say the music today is nothing like it was in, you know, the new millennium, so... I mean, everybody got their own style and own flavor of what they like. But at the end of the day, I appreciate good music, regardless where it comes from. So, right. You know. And you know what? That that's my thing because you know a lot of people looked at the the nineties. You know, the nineties decade as far as being the uh, one of the most powerful ones in R and B and hip hop for on the strength that you had so many. Um, R&B groups winning, and when I say winning, I'm talking about being individual, not sounding like the next group, still being, uh, uh, still being a, a heavy contribution to the to the industry, um, based on uh, different individual talents, um, you know, versus what a lot of people are saying nowadays, where it's just you know you kind of run into the same song, more or less. Well, to tell you the truth, I know exactly what you're talking about. A lot of times I listen to the radio, and I love all types of music, but I have to ask them, like, who, who sings this song? And I didn't have to do that in the 90s. I, when the right. record came on, I'd be like, oh, man, Nick Condition got a new record. Oh, snap, there goes Silk again. Oh, snap, there, that's Josie. But nowadays I'm like, is that him or is that him or is that him? Is that her? Is that her or who's that? And sometimes you don't know if it's a singer or a rapper doing the record. 
Right. There's, there's, don't get me wrong. There's really there there's great songs. There's good songs. A lot of good songwriting and stuff like that. But what I call this microwave music, it's just too rushed. You got to take your time and spend as much time on your vocals as you're doing on your music and stuff. And just take your time and cook it. It tastes better. I agree, it and that better. and it'll last longer. And, and 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 I'm and I'm glad we kind of started out at a gate like this because the group. Um, the the group. I mean, you guys are fresh from uh, Brooklyn, New York, correct? Born and raised Brooklyn, Queens. Brooklyn, Queens. Well, yeah, I grew up in Brooklyn, and Jeff grew up okay. in Queens. Yeah. And 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 you know, here here's a lot as far as what I hear when it when it comes, to, especially you know, a week or so prior to us setting up this interview. I mean, I've heard, you know, yo, it, the it, the group intro, you know, is as popular as they were in the in the nineties. You know, I, I think a lot of people today started appreciating exactly what you guys have done. Uh, you know, with the Come Inside song, Let Me Be the One, Love Thing, Never Again. You know, it's a handful of songs that a lot of people will remember to this day and that will remember it 20 years from now because of how passionate the, the, the sounds was. And, you know, and I definitely want to take time out to shout out and a rest in peace to Kenny Green, um, you know, for his contributions to the group as well because... You know, as a fan, and I'm and I'm speaking as a fan first, and I'm hearing this from like you know other fans of of music as well. Like you know, a lot of people say intro was not only dope, but you know they they had their own style, and that's how they was able to win and 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 still feel you know even though even though you guys were rocking Atlantic Records at the time, um, you know still they you know as far as Atlantic Records, we all we all think now this is just me. Y'all, they could have pushed y'all brand a lot further on. That's just that's just my opinion because of how popular you guys were. But in general, a lot of people have said, and this is not just coming from the states. And I said it, you know, so many German German uh, you know folks is out there, Japan folks is out there, is just really big intro fans. So how I mean, do, do y'all still feel that buzz as far as you know, just the notoriety as far as the thing that you got things that you guys done in the '90s compared, you know, up to now? Well, uh, just a chef. I'm, I can honestly say um, I probably took it for granted not knowing that we were or we had that many fans, um, uh-huh. especially within the music industry, artists coming up to us saying, man, you don't understand. I still rock your first album. You know, a lot of the male groups, a lot of the male artists, you know, they listen to our stuff and, and get, you know, they take pieces of, you know, ideas and, and learn from it. And I didn't know that we contribute so much to the industry that way. Um, as far as um, being catapulted to another level where the label should have put us, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not mad where we ended up at because at the end of the day, we still have fans. And, you know, it's not about status quo to us. It's about making no doubt. music and having fun. That's what it is. I, about us, you know. I, I agree. And, and, and also on the flip side, too, um, you know, I, I think, again, and you, you, you guys mentioned it as far as just the microwave, the microwave music and the fact that, you know, there there there's so many there's so many one night stand type of joints <laughs> that that the pure like you know romantic love songs like you know it's it's foreign to a lot of folks out there. Now there's still a handful of people out there still getting it in and doing that 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 pure R and B. But you know y'all y'all had a trend of of being able to do that. I mean, come inside. That's still a, a nice favorite for the ladies right now. You know what I'm saying? That's that's one of, of course one of our, our all time favorites, and that's Jeff on the end of the record, and, and just for the record, that's no acting on the last few um, <laughs> minutes of that. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the lady's name, uh, the young lady's name anonymous, but that was that was a real deal. <laughs> and, and just to go back real quick, real quick before we move forward, when you, uh-huh. when you mentioned Germany and Japan and other places, right. Atlantic Records marketed us more to a European crowd. We've never been to Japan, but if you, if we go into Europe, we were the first army group to perform in Russia. We were out in St. Petersburg, Russia. We had a crowd right. of 350,000 people out there. And I was like, everybody put your hands in the air. And they were just standing there looking at me like I had two heads. They didn't know what I was saying. As soon as Let Me Be The One came on, that crowd was rocking like an ocean, like the wave. So Atlantic Records did their thing on the European side, but if there's some people out in Japan listening right now, we want to get over into that market right there. We want to get over to Japan and China and Singapore, you know, and reach our fans over there. And with, with shows like yours, that's possible now. You know, we it's no longer we don't we no longer just have to wait on the record company to 
get in touch with the labels over there and say, okay, we're going to push this. So I am branded. Can you please brand us in that market? Because <laughs> 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 you branded. So we're trying to get branded in that market too. Yo, yo, say no more, man. That's that's nothing. And, and you know what? I'm going to actually ask this question now, and I was going to wait to, you know, our final segment a little bit later. But if people actually do want to hit – intro up to be able to get out there um, into different places overseas and in the States. How can they contact y'all as far as uh, locking some things down on the business level? Um, we, um, for your show purpose, Brandon, we're going to give them your number, and then we'll give you our individual number. That's cool. Got you. Uh, hey, hey, so, say no more. That's okay. You know what? I'm going to be you guys' unofficial, official PR guy right now. If anybody yeah, want to book the group intro, you can send an email to me. Branded at nextlegacy.com. You can do that, N-E-X-X-Legacy.com. You can also dial area code 510-314-0018. If serious, serious, serious people that actually want to lock down the group intro for any uh, bookings and, and things, not just overseas, they also perform in the States as well. So just make sure you holler at me, and I'll make sure I pass it on to the family. Appreciate it. How did I do? How'd I do? I do okay? Wait. I did okay? Wait. Yeah, there's a big <laughs> for every show. There's a booking fee for every show that, that comes in. Word. Word. I appreciate that. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, man. Now, yeah, now, fellas, now fellas, what, what what have you guys been up to as far as musically? I mean, you know, let let the listeners that, that know you and, and the new jacks that, 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 that's just now getting to know you, just let, let, let the world know what you've been up to. Three hours of sleep. Three hours of sleep a night. That's it. In the, in the studio, going hard, um, working with some great Grammy producer and uh, Grammy award winning producer, Big Baby, along with ourselves. So far, we've produced the entire album, wrote it. Like, we have the first single that's up on deck that you have tonight. That's called "Let's Get a Room." Mm-hmm. Um, we did. We also over the, the last say year and a half, we did a gospel album for a lady named. Phyllis Stevens, who happens to be John Legend's mother. We produced her gospel album. Um, just a lot of individual um, projects and just writing. I mean, I, I talk to Jeff just about every day. We actually live about five minutes apart. So we're pretty much like family, and, and we vibe, and we just stay on it. And Jeff, we, Jeff we just trying to give... On. Sorry, buddy. Go ahead. Yeah, Jeff, not good. I was still talking about the rest. I'm saying, I mean, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about music right now, though. I mean, yeah, we've been busy. We have love other um, ventures outside of our music. That's all good. Um, but our music, man, it's like the fans have been asking and asking. And you know what? I think we've been in the kitchen cooking up some really good stuff. You know, we've been seasoning some, some, some meat there for real. We got some stuff. And I think the fans are going to be very appreciative of what they're going to get. And I don't think we're going to sell any bootleg stuff to them. We're going to give them the authentic, <laughs> music. And we need, we need bigger venues. We've been leaving like 700 people outside. We did um, we did the Nokia Theater in New York. We left about, I think it was like seven, 800 people outside because there wasn't enough room for them to get in. There's only, four, wow. only, 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 only held 4,500 people. It was like seven, eight hundred people couldn't get in, man. It was like then the same thing with the, with the day party in Queens, with the women's circle. Another maybe seven, eight hundred people outside that couldn't get in. So, I mean, we love to come out and perform wherever you wherever you want, <coughs> but we just want to encourage the promoters to to just get a bigger place, just a little bigger place. Cause the, I mean, we, we'll come into any intimate spot, but just marketing for that. Don't sell. 5,000 tickets if you can only squeeze 2,500 people in the building. Cause, well, number one, we don't want to see anybody get hurt. And number two, we want people to be able to dance and move around. We don't want people just to be stuck up in there. We want to be comfortable. And so we can grab your girl and dance and come inside and then we'll let me be the one come on and just get crazy with it. Yeah, you don't want to be on the dance floor and grab some girl but it might not be the girl that you that that you with on accident you know what i'm saying that might not be good it might cause a problem you know what i'm saying so i mean how i mean you guys i mean wow just just the fact that you know four or five six hundred people that couldn't get in i mean you guys are drawn still heavy so you know with that being said in different spots i mean why is it hard for 
so many other people to actually lock shows in as far as, you know, promote and do shows and things like that? Is it is it more of a certain promoters in different states or yeah. or are you are you guys are you guys dealing with someone that, that, that that's really like, you know, about his uh promotions business as far as getting you guys gigs? Well, here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of elements in, in working. It it's definitely starts with behavior. If you are an artist that's very hard to deal with, you most likely won't get enough on people contacting you because everybody talks to everybody in this business. And if they find out you're difficult to deal with, most likely they don't want to deal with you. Mm-hmm. Also, we are very easy to deal with, very easy to deal with. And sometimes we even help out the promoter at times if it makes sense. If he has a venue in a small city that holds, let's say, 800 people, mm-hmm. and we know the ticket price is only going to be but 15, 20 bucks in a really tiny town, but we're right. trying to meet the promoter, you know, try to secure some of the costs. It's just to help them out a little because we understand we, we, might, we might just volunteer to take care of our own hotels to make it easy right. for them or something like that. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, we, we, like, again, we're doing this for our – our love of music and, and the fun of it. You know, the money right. always is going to come. Right. But, you know, I, we don't want to put the wrong message out there to promote that are listening. Yeah. You know, we want to take <laughs> care of business. <laughs> yeah, we went down to North Carolina. So here's a funny story. We, we, went, we were down in North Carolina about three weeks ago in Winston-Salem, and it was one of those cases where we told the promoter, he said, you know what, man, um, you go ahead and take care of what you got to take care of. We, we're going to handle our own hotels. And we just picked the hotel out of random, come to find out when we're checking in, we at the front desk with the temptations. You got a chance to meet the temptations. Word. Yeah. Word. Yeah, awesome. Dennis Eckler's in the crew. Yeah. We're like, what the hell? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. No, I, I respect that because, you know, uh, again, I mean, you, you guys don't have a, a major label attached to you right now, correct? Nobody right. in the 90s does. It's not about yeah, that yeah, no doubt. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. You, you know, it's, 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 it's freedom. It's freedom. The reason why I say it's freedom, a lot of people that's not in the industry don't really understand the music business. When you're mm-hmm. locked in a major label and they're throwing all these dollars at you, you got to pay every penny back, including marketing money, promotion, right. merchandise, anything they spend, you got to pay all of that back before you even see a royalty check. And so, not only on the money, it's just the, the tying up of your schedule and you wanting to make moves. See, we're, we're here on the level. We're, we're, we're in the clubs and we're hearing – what the people want, we're, we're getting the feedback, but then the people in the office are not. So, I mean, there'd be times I'd wake up and it'd be a black car sitting outside my house without me even knowing that they there to take me to the label for a whole day of press when I had plans of maybe going to the studio later on in the day. So mm-hmm. the, the, the system that we're in now is so much better and it gives us so much more flexibility to to make the right moves instead of the the, the, the moves that are calculated in the office. You know, if, if Jeff, let me ask you this. Jeff, Jeff, let me ask you this question, and 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 buddy, you can definitely uh you know chime in as well. But Jeff, mm-hmm. do you feel like uh the it, it was good for you guys to get in when you guys did back in the nineties compared Absolutely, to? Absolutely yes. <laughs> okay. It was, it was it was all God's timing, and I believe if we didn't get in at that time, we would have right. missed the boat. Definitely, I believe that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, guess yeah. what? We got in. We were one of the one of the few groups that got in without a demo, mm-hmm. we just sung live. We sung live, and they just went crazy. We we did put our work in on rehearsal to the point where we were hungry and shaking from nervous from not eating, not drinking enough water, just rehearsing all day. But it paid off because we didn't have a demo. Nobody really worked with us. We just, just stuck to ourselves and did what we did, and right. it paid off. And Brandon, you know, and I think what you're, what you're touching on is, at that time, the labels were putting money in to get those groups out there. So that mm-hmm. initial push that they gave us, I don't mm-hmm. know if groups are going to see that again. I don't know if they're going to, if there's ever going to be another time like that, as long as they stay in the format of digital music. Well, I don't, I don't speak, know. Speaking of that, then I mean that kind of brings up something that I want to ask you guys as well. I mean, being a part of a group, still maintaining your, your business. I mean, and of course. You know, like I said earlier, I mean, we're we're we're, we're missing a, a vital cog to to that with, with Kenny Green resting in peace, and and you guys got you know a new member, Mr. Quinn, um, as well. But I'm talking about as far as a group, you know, why is it that you kind of look and, and and I had a show 
couple of nights ago, and, and we were talking about the BET Awards and, and how that category as far as best R&B group has kind of came and went. Like every every group that's mentioned on there is not an official group, so to speak. You know what I mean? And And my question to you is, what happened to groups, and why has it gone so, you know, south as far as MIA? And, 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 and it's uh, not just mainstream, uh, you know, but also, you know, you don't hear too much about groups, not just R&B, but hip-hop, a lot of groups. I don't know. I, I, yeah, that, I think me and Jeff was just talking about that, too. It was like, yo, there's no groups out there. And that was one of the motivation, one of the most motivational factors of us getting back in the studio. You know, we talk to other people in the industry from the from the R&B guys to the rap guys and, and hippies, like, yo, man, you guys are, are, like, one of my favorite groups. I think you guys need to get out there, you know, put another album together, this, this, and that. And uh, one of the prime examples, and I, and I appreciate them and respect them, and uh, that's um, SWV, a group that right. was able to keep it together. And they're back now, and... We're back, and you know we're on the phone with we were on the phone with all the groups from the '90s, and there's a lot of those groups that they they understand the opportunity that's in front of them, and they're in the studio. Silk in mm-hmm. studio now too. Yeah, Silk, High Five. Uh, oh, no Shy doubt, no doubt. Shy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah like and, you know, and 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 to me, I think that's needed. I mean, to me, when it comes to that, and again, like you know, I said it earlier, best best time for music was the 90s especially r&b groups because everybody everybody contribute to the longevity of this history and <clears throat> here we are 2012 we're still reaching for it like i can't wait till y'all drop y'all album and y'all project and video the whole deal because i mean as a fan of music man i mean we need intro in our lives right now you know what i'm saying we missing that we need swv we need new edition we need because we don't have we don't have nobody new that's trendsetters right now. That could be able to do something different. Right. That's true. But I'm, well, I'm glad y'all here. <laughs> we are coming. I'm glad y'all here. We got the group with intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got Buddy. We got Jeff. We'll we got intro the group in the building on Branded After Dark. And, um, I mean, what, what's what's going on with the project? Title name? Uh, when's it dropping? Let, let, let the world know. Well, I know First that we're planning on get along June twenty sixth. Yeah, let's get along. Okay, let's let's get a room is the name of, name of the title of the album. Let's, let's get a room. Well, normally we, we you know we did the first album we we were self titled intro. Second album uh-huh. was new life. The second album was so different from the first album because during the writing of that album, Kenny's dad was passing away and eventually passed away. So that right. whole. That, that album was so much different from the first album because the first album was a party album. And when we sat down to write the second album, we weren't really in that party frame of mind, but we didn't want to get too far away from our listeners. This mm-hmm. third album is going to go back in between it, that, between that first album and that second album to bridge that gap. Because with, in between those albums, we, we pretty much we have people ask us, well, that, that album is a little different than that best album. Album two is out so much different than album one. It sounds a lot more like gospel, and then I haven't had the chance to explain to everybody why that was the case, but that's the reason why, because of what was going on in the background during the writing mm-hmm. of that album. But um, this third album right here is definitely a lot of feel-good party, intro grooves, same harmony. You know, you're, you're gonna I mean, y'all, y'all bringing back that '90s feel though. Is y'all bringing back that traditional yeah. R&B? You know, it's just us. It's not that we bring it back. We just like doing what's inside of us. Um, I think it was like what two nights ago, Jeff. I met, I met, I met my idol. I met Layla Hathaway, and and Word. as I sat there and, I, and yeah, I watched the concert. And as I stood there and I watched the thing, she doesn't, she doesn't go with the trends. She just does her, right. and she packs the house, and they love it. They come to hear the new song, but they want to hear the old song. Mhm. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful because you know Layla, she's definitely one of my all-time favorites. I mean, you know, look look, look at her bloodlines. You know what I mean? Like, you know, she she's yeah. one of the greats. She's definitely one of the greats. In, in her show. Wow, wow, that's heavy. That's heavy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna close this segment down with uh, letting the world know that there is that brand new song that we're gonna uh, intro right now. You know what I'm saying? So ha- has this been a uh, uh, moved about as far as on online radio stations? Or are we breaking this first? Or 
we're we're actually breaking this first. We have a, a big event coming up that we that we initially thought was going to be the groundbreaking. That's going to be in Delaware on June tenth at the Opera House there. But tonight is the is going to be is going to be that night that people are here for the first time. If if you're not in our circle, there's people that's listening to it that that heard it because they know us. But as far as the masses, this will be their very first time getting a getting a taste of Let's Get a Room. And um, let's get a room. Is oh man, it's just so much I could talk. I could say about it because it's so <laughs> it's so big. I mean, we've we've gotten a film offer from it already. A movie called uh, what is it called? Sucker for Love. Jeff, that they is that right? Part of. Um, as far as um, ho- ho- hotel chains reaching for the song, let's get a room. We've gotten a few calls in reference to that. We had some cross marketers reach out for us. So let's get a room. I'm excited about let's get a room. In fact, when I get off the phone with you, I'm gonna go get a room. <laughs> Word, that's what's up So, hey, this being one of the brand new uh, You know, we're, we're premiering this right here On Branded After Dark So if y'all y'all listeners out there, if y'all ready Here we go Right here on Branded After Dark We got something brand new from Intro Hey, hey, this is this is, this is is that traditional type of R&B music That, that has never left their souls And they got it right here Live and direct Oh boy, oh boy, Branded After Dark Woo! High one right there, Jeff, buddy, intro, the group is in the building right now, and, uh, yo, I ain't even gonna lie, man, like, you got, you got women out there right now, I guarantee you, they're like, okay, let's get a room, yeah, I way, you got it, it's it's definitely wrong. something hot, <laughs> props, props for that yeah. one, though, yes, yes, that is, that is a banger right there, that is a certified, that's a hit, thank you, thank you, that's just, uh, the, the Oh, that's the setup record right there. That's that's the set, that's the setup record. Man, yeah, this guy actually, this guy called us. Uh, we were talking to this guy the other day, and he told us he said, "You guys owe us some. You owe you guys owe me child support money." My kid just turned eighteen. <laughs> when Come Inside came out, you know, I was grooving to it, and you guys owe me child support money. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We just come. Those type of records are just they're just fun to make, man. They're just fun to make because, you know, the imagination when you're thinking about just real stuff, you know, you don't really have to reach for records. I think people understand those simple records that for sing along to just get right to the point. Yo, and, and and I guarantee you this, there's probably gonna be some more people actually hitting y'all up, like, yo, y'all gonna owe me some more child support because there's <laughs> gonna be more babies being made. And it's all oh, your Lord. fault, but that's okay though. That's okay though. Lord. If you get, if you get, if you can get, if you can set it up just like that for the ladies, which I did with this track right here. Let's get a room. Oh yeah, there, there's gonna be, there's gonna be multiple, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure not just guys, girls are probably like, yeah, I didn't have babies, I didn't have babies because of you, <laughs> right? Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me ask let me ask you guys this. When it comes to just all the, the, the writing as far as being a part of a group, um, you know, if, if one person has an idea that another person may not feel, um, how's that happy medium living? Like how do you guys get to that point where you guys can be able to, you know, take something from, from this to be able to give to that? Can I answer this Jeff real quick? Um, we definitely cross those roads at times. And um, one person may be hearing something the other person may not be hearing. It may take a couple of times to listen. Or sometimes, you know, we all gather, not just the immediate group, but some people in our camp, and we, we do the old Motown thing, you know, who like it, raise your hand type thing. Mm-hmm. So it becomes a voting thing, and, and if the song makes sense of what we're trying to do, then we go with it. You know, sometimes. Yeah, like we, do, we call it like the beach ball effect. Like if you if you're on the beach and you're playing beach ball, and if you just mm-hmm. standing there and you're just hitting the ball up in the ear by yourself, it doesn't really make sense. You just hit it for a while, and then you hit it, pass it to the next person. Let them hit it, and pass it to the next person. You know, mm-hmm. okay. see what we come up with. It's like pretty much been like gumbo with this album right here. It's just it's just been flowing. It's just been flowing. Yeah, we had a great great mentor. We were blessed to have. Kenny Green is a member of our group. He was, yeah. to me, is what he was, if not the one of the best songwriters of our era. 
And um, he he's really underrated, and, you know, God bless him. He passed before his time. No but, doubt. Um, I believe if he was still here, he would he would be in his great spot of as far as the top songwriters because one year we were at the so we were at the ASCAP Music Awards and somebody had gave us some clothes. One of the designers, I'm not going to say his name, so we had mm-hmm. on matching short sets and we were walking around ASCAP Music Awards and people were whispering to themselves like, "Look, these guys, they dress like you know who are they." <laughs> then the next year we came back and was winning all the awards, Songwriter of the Year songs top 20 you know so mm-hmm. it was like and it was you know mainly because Kenny Green and you know a lot of people I'm not sure if the listeners know he was responsible for songs like Love No Limit My Love Reminisce yeah. from Mary J. Blige those, out, those songs were on Intro's first album and they were pulled off of our first album and placed on Mary J. Blige's album at that time mm-hmm. because she had the, the big budget and she needed the songs and they right. were, were originally I want to ask that buddy I want to ask that. I had a conversation with Buddy. I was like, oh, we need to start incorporating some of those songs that we're responsible of being a part of that Kenny wrote. You know, I think, you know, a little segment in the show where just to remind them, y'all wouldn't have had, you know, these songs for Mary if it wasn't for Kenny. You know, Word. And, you know, adding that stuff into our show, like a little, you know, sing along on Reminisce, Love No Limit, My Love, even stuff with Tyrese and Wyans. Mm-hmm. It goes on and on, stuff he wrote with, you know. Some of those little yep. melody segments is important for people to remember how deep his hands was in a lot of people's projects. Right? Didn't uh, didn't didn't Kenny work with uh, Will Smith, Cameron, Will Ninety Eight yep. Degrees? Yeah. Didn't he yep. didn't he do some work with them too? Yep. Exactly. He did. Okay. Okay. Ninety Eight Degrees was a Motown at the time. And, and see, that's the thing. A lot of people, even though they can probably Google it and you know find it or anything like that, as far as you know, you know, a lot a lot of people nowadays, you know. It's it's hard enough for you know the young kids to pick up a book and read. It's also hard if it's you know if it's not really dealing with them right now. It's hard for them to really go research and find out about a little bit about history nowadays. So it's important for you know a a a, a lot of us out there to know exactly where some of this stuff came from. And you know, and I appreciate you guys for actually you know letting the world know that too. So it's 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 psh. come on, like I said, man. I think I think a lot of us definitely need to you know at least do some more research, especially when it comes to music and the history of it. You know, um, it's funny how you mentioned that. And I was listening to an interview from an artist, um, Leela Hathaway, actually, on um, YouTube today. And she said it was so <laughs> sad that artists today don't know the greats like Donny Hathaway. Or, yep. You know, they may know Stevie Wonder about, about uh, his name, but they know yep. some of his greatest hits. They don't know anything about... A lot of those artists that came, you know, Shaka Khan, they don't know who these yep. people are. They don't know. And I was mm-hmm. watching 106 in Park, and when um, I Get Money for 50 Cent first came out, they mm-hmm. said, who knows where this originally, original beat came from? Everybody was blank. Yep. It came from it came from Milk and Giz. You know, it's sad, man, how they don't know but what's present. They don't know what really built, you know, what today is. Yep. So, you know, I think, you know, it's going to take – people like us to really re-educate some of these lost souls out there. Yeah, lot of I agree. I agree and stay on top of it, too, because stuff. you know how it is with some some teachers that teach, and, you know, some of them will only do it for a hot minute and then will leave that student alone. But, you know, nowadays with the attention span being so great and we have not just Internet, but, you know, we have the iPads and the iPhones and the, and the whole deal, you know, a lot of distractions can come up, but it's going to take – you know, it's, it's going to take that good village like we used to have back in the day when we were growing up. Y'all remember what that saying? You know, it takes a village to raise a child. Raise a child, Y'all remember yeah. that? Uh-huh. You know, it's, yeah. it's going to take that in, in a sense when it comes to this music and the education of it because, uh, yeah, we, we, we're lacking that. We're definitely lacking that in this business. And let, 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 me, ask you, let me ask you guys, Jeff, and I'll start with you. Like, um, when, when, when Mr. Uh, Mr. Kermit Quinn, uh, how, how did that whole – you know, adding him on to this uh, right. legendary group come about? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm going to tell you a little story, and then I'm going to tell you where we're at today. Okay. Um, I met him in 2007. He was singing at an open mic spot. You know, I said he was adding on some shades, and uh, it was at uh, Apache in Atlanta. I said, yo, man, you was dope. You killed it. You killed it. He said, thanks, man. And then I asked him, I said, you know, what are you doing? He was working on other projects. Cool. I had my shades off in the background, you know, chilling. And he approached me and said, man, you from Intro? I was like, yeah, man. And that's how we clicked from there. 
he was dope. I called Buddy. I said, yo, Buddy, Buddy's in New York at the time. I said, dude, this dude is dope. We need to check him out. So we checked him out. But to make a short, long story short, Quinn has done a lot of stuff with us. Um, but unfortunately, we moved on because Quinn had other reservations that he wanted to do. And we mm-hmm. blessed him and let him go forward and doing what he needed to do. But um, the new guy in the group that you hear on the record is Ramon. Okay. Anybody you want to take it from there? Uh, yeah. His name is Ramon Adams. He's right, right from our neighborhood. Um, it, there was an issue with us. Um, okay, Quinn was living in Atlanta. Me and Jeff was living in Queens. So me and Jeff would fly to Atlanta like every week to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And that was one of the things I was pretty much slow on the up. So I had started asking around for like the last two years, hey, man, anybody I run into music-wise, hey, man, do you know anybody that might blend in with us? You know, we're looking for another member. And mm-hmm. I was getting, yo, I know this guy named Ramon. I was like, all right, if, you know, if you can put me in touch with him, yo, if I see him or anything, you know, I'll pass it on to him. Sitting in the barbershop, yeah, I know this guy named Ramon. I was like, man, let me get your phone number. The guy gave me his phone number. I called the phone. The phone was off. I'm in the airport. I see a bassist that plays um, for Cosette Michelle, a guy named Dominique. I'm like, yo, Dominique, man, I'm looking for a singer for the group. He said, man, I know somebody. I was like, what's his name? He said, his name is Ramon. He said, and I'll be back on New Year's Eve. He said, I'll be back in New York on New Year's Eve, and I'll be playing with him at his church. He said, I'll pass the word on to him. So people kept telling, them, telling me about the same guy. They kept mentioning it, even to Jeff, about this guy named Ramon, who lives right in our neighborhood, but we never crossed paths. Since we've been working with Ramon, talking about like putting a, a fire underneath the frying pan. We, we're in the word. studio. We're banging. We get along. We got on the road. We got jokes. You know, no stress. The vibe is great. The vocal blends, the acapellas are good, so yeah. And I, you know, I'm, I'm apologetic for not um, getting that info to you before the show, as far as as far as Quinn. But I won't be surprised if Quinn ends up with some writing on our album and stuff like that. He's still, mm-hmm. still one of our good friends, but he he's really on. He he's a talent by himself. He's better off as a solo artist more so than right. being in a group. Yeah. And 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 I'm pretty sure at you know you guys as a group you guys know that too. And as far as you know history, now it's always good when y'all can be able to tell the story of how things transpired to the way that it is right now. To me, that's always a good piece of uh, you know music history, like we like we talked about. Like to me, I think that's that's good. And it, you know it's funny. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to you guys tell that story, and I'm like, damn, this dude is uh he's a, he's a hard guy to catch up with. So you know, I'm glad y'all caught up with this dude and. It, it, it ain't nothing better than the blessing of, of being around a guy that can light a fire under you and give you new life, huh? Yeah, right. I also want to add that, um, yeah, buddy, said that, you know, Quinn and us are cool. So anybody that want to check out Quinn, he does have a movement in Atlanta. I know he, um, the name of his band is Jukebox. So they're doing their okay. thing in Atlanta. So, you know, we're not leaving him in the dark. You know, we want to help catapult what he's trying to do as much as he's doing for us as well. Uh, but as far as intro, we're going forward. You know, we're not we're not going to miss any stops. You know, we're, going, we're like a train, man. We're stopping at every stop. This is a local train, <laughs> so we're going to we're going to touch everything, man. And uh, I just want to say that, man, we are putting in hard work. And I think we are very humble and acceptance of everything that's come our way. We're doing promotional shows for radio stations. We're doing um, stuff that makes sense that is going to make sense for us as well. Um, we're not greedy cats. We're very, um, you know, how can I say it? We get along with everybody, too. Like, it's, if it's business, it's business. If it makes sense, let's make it work. And I mean, to it. me, it, it comes off in listening to you two speak. I mean, you know, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind, I mean, not, you know, aside from your blessed talent that you guys have as as musicians, you know, first thing that comes to mind is, is real humble because, I mean, Humble will get you everywhere with every fan for you to just be able to, you know, walk and talk and, and, and being able to, you know, shake hands, kiss baby, so to speak. And, you know, it's 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 a lot that a lot of, uh, you know, musicians from the 90s actually are, are like that because, you know, they, they, they know how the game of business went back then to how it is now. And it's real, you know, you got to be real independent on your grind and hustle. The best thing you could do is being able to, uh, you know, quickly uh be accessible for your fans and that's real good that's real big real big right and this is a lot of exciting talent that we're working with as well that, that's coming up and we're looking forward to the summer it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a very exciting summer single comes out june 26th 
Let's get a room. We'll, while, while you all are out getting a room, we'll still be in the studio finishing up this album. And, and we're going to need all of our fans to support us. In order for Intro to be very uh, successful on this project, mm-hmm. everybody needs to be a part of this project. And that's how we want to do it. We want your input. Mm-hmm. We want, um, if you have any questions, you can hit us on our Facebook. Uh, this is Jeff. My Facebook is Jeff Sanders Intro. And then, Buddy, what's your Facebook? Clinton, C L I N T O N, Buddy Wyke, B U D D Y, W I K E, Facebook. And then our YouTube page is um, uh, Intro Music. Music Page. Intro Music Page. That's a YouTube page okay. name. So, you know, you can reach us, hit us up with questions. We will gladly, gladly educate you on some of the things you may not know about. You know, especially the, we had a lot of new young listeners. I got people mm-hmm. on my page 14 years old talking about they loving this song, and the song <laughs> is 20 years old. I'm like, they just keeping up with this. But it's amazing how people so young that are very, um, how can I say, interested in music and want to know right. more and are growing artists, and they pick up stuff so old. I mean, yep. no different than what we're picking up from what we heard in the 50s and the 60s. It's the same thing going on. So we appreciate that. And talking yeah, to there, young people is needed. There is hope out there because you're right. I mean, there there is a lot of fans out there that that's real big intro fans that – not only wasn't around in the 90s, but, you know, like you said, 14, young ones, real young. I mean, so it's a generational type of thing, and I'm pretty sure their mom or their dad or, their, you know, whoever their guardian is probably put them up on intro game, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and uh, again, it kind of goes back to, you know, making sure that we do teach these kids. Like, you know, my mom would put me up on Stevie Wonder, and I was a massive Stevie wow. Wonder fan growing up. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Michael mm-hmm. Jackson with the Jackson 5 and so mm-hmm. on, like, you know, it was around the household, so it's always a good thing where you can be able to pick up real positive, talented, uh, real good music while growing up, and then your appreciation for different generations kind of grow when it comes to that. As long as you have an open mind, I, I think when you do, you can't be stopped at all, right? Right. Like you said, you're, you're the big Stevie Wonder fan. You know how I how I my relation for him, man. He showed us so much love. Man, Kenny, Kenny and Jeff stayed in Los Angeles one day after we did a video, and I got back on a plane and came to New York. As soon as I walked in the house, Jeff called me up and said, man, you should have stayed out here because James Cleveland's son came to the hotel, and he said that Stevie Wonder wants to meet us tomorrow. Man, I All went right. right back to the airport, got on the next flight, and went back to Los Angeles. <laughs> sure enough, I got back to the hotel the next morning. Uh, Andre Cleveland, that's James Cleveland's son, picked us up from the hotel, took us out to Stevie Wonder's studio. Stevie Wonder calls over Johnny Gill, Terrence Trent Darby, and we record a song that's produced by himself and Eric Clapton called I'm the One Who Loves You. It's on um, Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield. Album. And it's just yes. his yeah. birthday that day. So Stevie went out. Stevie sent out somebody to bring back a big old birthday cake. He gave Kenny a brand-new portable dat player. And believe it or not, we played table hockey with Stevie Wonder. Bust my no, tail. Two games, man. With his hands, not lying to you, man. He bust me in two games in a row. I was like, man, you ain't blind. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. yeah Steve, Stevie is a genius. And then, you know, just, wow. You know, like I said, to me, that's that, that's one of my uh, media dreams that, I, that I've actually been working on over the last couple of weeks to try to see if I can set a date to get that guy on because, I mean, like I said, when it comes to music, and, and people don't understand, you know, as we get ready to wrap this up with you guys, a couple of quick questions, but I got to say this, that, you know, the power of music, man, like, especially when you really appreciate it, if it's in your soul, not just a person singing it, but if you really feel in the words of what people say and how they say it and how they articulate it, because, you know, growing up in different many places, you can be in low income, high income, whatever, you know what I'm saying, music has always been that catalyst to you know, how you feel on a certain day. You know what I'm saying? If you broke up with somebody, you had a song for that. If you was in love with your woman, you had a song for that. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, and, and, and to me, like I said, a lot of people don't don't appreciate it for what it's worth. That's why anytime if 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 intro is in here or if we get anybody else on here, my appreciation for music and what you guys have done will always reign supreme because not too many people uh We'll, we'll, we'll take the time and just say thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, true, true. Um, but before we before we go, um, Brandon, can we can we please thank a couple people that that that's really helping us out and and 
made this possible for us as well tonight. Because um, one of your good friends, Kevin Gray, up, up in Boston, is a good friend of ours. Um, yeah, you you know what I call them, right? I call them the, you know, even though they have Kevin Garnett out there in Boston, I call him the real KG. He is the real okay. KG. Yeah, big shout-out <laughs> to him and his people. Um, Jeff, I know you have some shout-outs. I want to shout-out um, the, the group out there. Um, well, go ahead, Jeff, and then I'll jump back in. Um, no, I just want to thank everybody for all the support. Um, I'm thinking for uh, the fans that are eagerly awaiting our new project. I appreciate them sticking by us because without them, you know, there would not be an intro, and we definitely, definitely, definitely would have to thank them all the time. Just like we thank God all the time, we also got to thank the fans. Although we're not comparing y'all to God because there's no other. But we right. want to thank you all for supporting us, man. And also, those that live in New York or come into New York, we have a new restaurant opening. It's called Southern Flair. It's going to be a restaurant slash entertainment venue. It's going to be located in the Rochdale Community um, Co-op Center. It's over 35,000 people live there, so it's going to be a packed house every night. That opens on June, I mean, July, what is it, June 16th is the grand opening. So just want wow. to plug that in as well. Um, when I when I step foot in, uh, in, in on the East Coast, can I, uh, can I can I get a special when I get down there? Yeah, my brother's a chef, man. He can push it down. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We got fans of you guys asking um, if you guys have Twitter. You guys tweet? Yeah. Yes, no. Twitter, uh, uh, this is Buddy. I'm, my Twitter is intro Buddy White, I-N-T-R-O-D-U-D-D-Y-W-I-K-E. And uh, one more shout-out to White World Entertainment and uh, the famous boys out in Atlanta. Jeff, what's your Twitter? Man, listen, I don't do that Twitter stuff. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. You, you're I not on Twitter, Jeff? Nah, man. I, I, I canceled that a long time ago. I hate Twitter. Tweet me, tweet me, and intro Buddy White, and I'll forward them to Jeff. So we yeah, yeah. Twitter that hit Buddy up. <laughs> I got you. Can you can find me I on Facebook. You. That's about it. But Twitter is like the nosy, the nosy tool. <laughs> I'm tired of Twitter. <laughs> this is a good tool for I, the fans to reach out, but honestly, I just don't have the patience. Buddy, he's a master with Twitter. He can do that. Japan, get at I am branded. <laughs> Japan promoters in Japan in the Far East, get at I am branded. So we don't have to, we we love to traveling to Germany and Russia and Mishy, London Mishy. and Amsterdam. We we, we like Absolutely. to the other side also. And I'm gonna put it out there again. If if you guys and girls, that's promoters in in all parts of the globe, and want to book intro, make sure you go ahead and hit up my email, which is branded b r a n d e d at nextlegacy, N-E-X-X, legacy.com. You can also dial 1-510-314-0018 for all serious booking needs. I have spoken. <laughs> I see you out there. A lot of people hit me up on my Facebook right now. That's, that's, really, that's, that's like really filling your show, man, which is great. I see my boy Scooter. He's one of the best bass players out there. Oh man, a lot of friends. Now you, now y'all, y'all up bring because of your show. That's that's on my Facebook right now that I haven't heard from in a while. That's good. That's I, solid. That's solid. But you know what? I mean, it, it it takes it takes you know it takes that village that we were talking about earlier. I mean, to me, you know, it's not going to be one of those one time deals where we're just going to have intro here and then we won't hear from them again. Nah, I want to be a part of what you guys uh, have, have have put down in 2012 and. You know, to me, it, it would it wouldn't be a, a service that would be justice if I was just only to have you guys and not have you guys but come back. So, my invitation's out here. Not only that, I'm gonna try to work on getting you guys a gig out here in the Bay Area. So, you know, the Bay loves the intro. They they big intro fans. Yeah, the Bay, the Bay is like the East Coast to Cali to us, man. Like they're different yes, than yes. the rest of California. They got the East Coast feel. Something about the Bay, man. Something about oh, the Bay. Come they on. stand out come totally on, we, different. I love the Bay. We 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 from that we from that pure pure soil like you. I mean, we're just from different coasts. You know what I'm saying? With the same mentality, yeah. though. You know what I'm saying? We just do it a yeah. little different. And not only that, y'all do it first because you guys are ahead three hours than we are. So <laughs> that's all. That's all. But now nah, I just want to give a shout out to all the ladies in the bay. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I know some ladies out there who be having my baby, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yo, 
I appreciate it. I really do. And, and like I said, I mean, to me, it, it's only justice that we can continue to grind for your cause, and, and we're going to definitely do that. So please make sure that we uh, we lock each other down as far as, you know, getting our um, contact info. I'll make sure I hit y'all up on Facebook as well. And, uh, you know, let's let, let, let's keep this going. And people out there that's intro fans, when – when everything comes out in June, when we get the single, will be available iTunes and all that good stuff, right? June right, right. Tuesday, June twenty sixth. All right. So I'm telling y'all, if y'all got it, treat it like stock. The more you invest in these brothers, the better, the better you guys and girls will be able to be as far as you know keeping this tradition going for intro. So, uh, real quick before I let you go, is there some acapella that? Uh, Actually, you know, one of the one of the station directors on here. Let me put a mic on her too, Miss uh, Miss Miss Baby Girl from the at eight one three out there in Florida. She wants to know if you guys can do like a real nice, suave intro. But I'll let her ask that question. Go ahead, Princess. Do your thing. Hey, intro. How y'all doing? Hey, how you doing? All right. I'm good. I'm good. I'm trying not to be goofy and scared on the phone. But yeah, Brand just took my question. <laughs> like, do you, do you have something y'all could bust acapella for us, if y'all don't okay. mind? It don't even it's only, matter. There's only two of us on the line right now. It don't matter. Um, um, say that again? What, what you want to swing real quick for? I don't know. Will she want to <laughs> rub you down? <laughs> uh, hold on, let me say this again. Hey, baby, uh, what do you want? <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to, to behave. You can't bury white me like that. <laughs> without <laughs> Let me be. Let me be the one, the one you come running to. Running to. to. Whenever, Whenever you, need you need it, it. You need it. Let, let me be, be. let me be the, the one, the one you come running to. Come running to. to. Whenever, Whenever you need it, it, it. you need it. But get it, get it, you need, you need the other. You should have seen the other note because it's, it's a three note thing. What happened to you, bro? Was waiting for you to do that. Nah. Ah, you waiting for me to do that? <laughs> yeah, it's three parts in that. What <laughs> about it again? <laughs> Yeah, don't bury white me, y'all. Don't bury white me. Don't do that. I just want to say that uh, uh. I'm thinking about you and, uh, you know, there's times in my life. and uh, Uh-huh. <laughs> Listen, we could, we could do this role-playing thing all night on two shows. Or just FYI. Just... Y'all got, y'all got the right one. I'm just saying. <laughs> I come, I right come one. to your room. Woo woo. Let's get a room. <laughs> okay, what you what you gonna do over there? <laughs> no, nah, I'm behaving. But that let's get a room joint. That's what we're trying to What you look like over there? Thank you. Hmm. Well, if you go follow me on Twitter, you'll see. <laughs> I don't, Jeff is not on Twitter, so Buddy will be following you. Jeff is not on Twitter. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jeff and Buddy, I just sent y'all a yeah. request. So y'all definitely know what I look like. Jeff, oh, okay. baby. Hey. Yeah. yeah. I want to thank you, baby girl, for calling in today. What? <laughs> well, you better stop. Because, boy, I will rub you down. Wow. Ooh. Let me correct you all over your body, baby. Yeah, baby, yeah. Oh, do Don't do that. <laughs> Hey, on that oh, note, let's go ahead. Oh, but, but, what's her name, though? What's her name? Um, go ahead. Philly. Silly? I can Philly, make PA. you feel all oh, right, oh, baby, if you let okay. me come okay. inside. Okay. I can make you feel all oh, oh, right, oh, right. oh <laughs> baby, if you let me come inside. You're supposed to be like, is that you, Jeff? <laughs> it don't matter who was singing, just as long as y'all can satisfy that need, I'm okay. Ooh. Okay now. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> Fellas, I appreciate it. Hey, on that note, we're gonna go ahead and run that track again. Let's get a room. Just because we could do it on branded after dark and That's right. Right. much Shout love, out much respect. From Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the number one radio station for the people.